coolant, antifreeze, rust inhibitor. We don't even know what to call it. Call it. Call it. This is um, something which has become really, really quite complicated and absolutely doesn't need to be. Um, back when cars were first um, invented, what did we put in the radiator? We put water in. And uh, then we found out, I mean, the water was excellent at cooling the engine, cooling down the metal block and um, transferring that heat then out to the radiator where it could be cooled. But we found out that um, the water was also corrosive. Uh, it would um, rust out the metal engines and damage the uh, head gaskets and so forth and could also corrode out our radiators. So one of the things we started to add to our water was a rust inhibitor. Um, putting something into the water so it's not corrosive to the metals that it's running around in. That's one of the things which we're adding to our water these days um, to keep it cool. The other thing is uh, if water freezes, it expands. So if you have your radiator chock-a-block full of water and you go to a situation where um, it gets down below freezing, then uh, it will actually split or crack your radiator. The water inside the radiator will expand and that will cause a hole. And then of course, when you start the car up and it melts, then all of that's gonna pour straight out. You'll have a hole in your radiator. So there's two things that we've done um, to the water that's cooling our engines um, to make it better for our engines. One is the corrosion inhibitor, stops it from rusting and stops it from dropping and plating things out. And two is adding antifreeze antiboil, um, which is just a glycol content. Um, so it doesn't freeze um, so quickly, but it also, the glycol, the same chemical, also means that it can go higher without boiling, which is an obvious advantage in radiators as well. There are two big brackets of coolants. Type A coolants have a glycol in them, so they um, have that antifreeze, antiboil component, and type B um, only have the corrosion inhibitors. So what is the actual breakdown of the uh, coolant that we buy. Uh, the type B coolant, as I said, just has the corrosion inhibitors, but type A is what I'm gonna talk about here. 85 to 95% is actually gonna be the ethyl glycone or ethylene glycol. That's the antifreeze, anti-boil product. Five to 10% of it is going to be the different um, inhibitors, different rust things that can go in, and I'll show you the different types that can go in. And then you've also got anti-foaming agents uh, which, as I read around the internet, also can help with the heat transfer. Now here's something really interesting. The colder environment you're in, the more glycol you chuck in there, right? The ethylene glycol. No. Have a look at this chart. You'll see that actually, once you get beyond 50% of the ethylene glycol, its freezing protection starts to go in the opposite direction. So they're recommending here uh, somewhere between 33 and 50%. Um, of your glycol and not more otherwise the antifreeze protection will um, start to go down So it's not necessarily chuck as much as you can in you've got to get in the mix about right as you can see from this graph Now the really interesting thing from my searching around the internet uh, was test strips uh, I'm a swimming pool guy. That's my training. That's my background and it's amazing to me that the test strips they're using uh, to actually work out what's going on um, with the uh, radiator coolant are very, very similar to what you do in a swimming pool. The test kits are gonna test the glycol level, and that's really important um, for knowing where your antifreeze protection is actually at. As I said, between 33 and 50% is the optimum. You don't wanna go higher than that. But then they're also testing pH and reserve alkalinity. And that's amazing to me, because in a swimming pool, that's exactly what you test. And the reason you do it in a swimming pool is the same as for the water in the radiator, so it's not corrosive. You don't want it eating away the metal of a car engine. You don't want it eating away a reactive surface of a swimming pool. So they're also testing the pH and total, um, not total alkalinity, reserve alkalinity, um, to, make, to check the corrosion resistance. There are lots of different um, corrosion inhibitors that are available. And that's where all the different colors and all of the different technologies come from. You're reading your labels, you'll see seven year coolant, lifetime coolant, 10 year coolant, three year coolant. The different inhibitors that they're putting into the coolants are the things which actually change in life. The glycol, the antifreeze, antiboil, doesn't wear out, isn't consumed. 
if you if it leaks out and you're you're topping up with water all the time obviously it'll get diluted down but in its use if it stays in a sealed system the ethyl glycol the antifreeze antiboil doesn't go anywhere it doesn't change not so with the corrosion inhibitors the corrosion inhibitors do change um, and they're the things that wear out and disappear so they're the ones you've got to um, be on top of and they don't all and they're not all compatible with each other that's why adding a certain type or a certain color becomes important um, because they're not all the same now the other thing the ethyl glycol you're thinking is green right well no it's not it's actually clear um, again just from this research i've done the green color that we associate with the traditional ethyl glycol is just a dye that funky luminescent green color uh, is just a dye they're adding to the water as is the blue as is the red as is the pink um, and all the rest of the colors that are available they are just denoting different um, types of uh, rust inhibitors and i'll give you a chart right here right now so that you can see all of the different rust inhibitors and what they do and i'll also put up a chart um, which shows what manufacturers have said what sort of coolants they want what suit their cars the best because most manufacturers now are wanting aluminium protection they're wanting to obviously protect their plastics and their rubbers uh, and all the different components of the car there's also sensors and all sorts sticking into the coolant now as well and that all needs to be looked after so there it is for coolants uh, basically the main thing that's cooling the engine down is the water uh, we put antifreeze anti-boil in it um, so that it doesn't freeze and break things and we put corrosion inhibitors into it so it doesn't rust the engine uh, the last thing i'll mention is that in my research on the internet i came across a couple of race car engine coolants maximum cooling efficiency and they were type b uh, coolants as in there was no ethyl glycol added because again when you put the antifreeze antiboil in it does actually reduce the um, cooling efficiency of the water you get a little bit less efficiency than just straight tap water so if you're in a situation where it's never going to freeze ever not going to get anywhere near it um, you don't want a big concentration of antifreeze antiboil because it will actually um, work the opposite for you but you do of course need the corrosion inhibitors in there so there you go they've even got a the marketing guys have even got a race car um, coolant which has no antifreeze antiboil in it but just has the uh, rust inhibitors um, which is basically getting as close back to water as we can so there you go if you've got any more questions put them down in the um, comments down below but uh, yeah like this video or subscribe to my channel so you can come back and see all the different charts and all the bits in here but there it is that's as much as i could discover on coolants for cars and motorbikes but wait there's more one more thing what actually are these different uh, inhibitors uh, you've got here the phosphates great for protecting aluminium and iron from corrosion uh, and acting as a ph buffer that means it'll maintain the ph in a non-corrosive range uh, downside it creates scale by reacting with hard water so if you've got a lot of calcium in your water that's not good silicates protecting aluminium and iron from corrosion uh, depletes once contaminated prone to gelation you don't want that sort of that's you know making gloopy inside your radiator so that one's got a few issues obviously Moving on, organic acids uh, protect aluminium again and iron, uh, but they form deposits. And nitrates protects iron from corrosion. That's probably an older one because most cars got aluminium in them somewhere now and a short life. And borate protects iron from corrosion and acts as a pH buffer. Corrosive to aluminium. So there you go. If you've got some old borate coolant um, hanging around, uh, don't go sticking it into a modern car. That would be the one which is incompatible. Uh, and not any good but there you go there's the um, different types of inhibitors that are mainly in use and uh, are the reason for all of the different colors but go back to my video a little bit earlier and see the section where it talked about what your brand want or do some research for your particular car and find out which inhibitor it's got in it because as it says they're not all uh, compatible and find out which one you need to be topping up with or replacing but uh, there you go, they're not all the same, and uh, it's the inhibitors that make the difference.